Hey guys, Kyle the Death Knight of Anime here bringing you my review for One Piece chapter 908 and oh god it's one of those chapters again like the just the amount of shit that went down in this chapter is actually kind of incredible and it Honestly, this chapter actually fed into something I've been feeling about One Piece, One Piece manga for a while, which is that on on top of on top of the fact that it, it really seem on um, top of the fact that, that Oda is not wasting any time in getting to in getting to the like the, like the meat of the of the Reverie arc, it also it also kind of it also seems like the pacing in this in this arc in this arc has actually been like we 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 basically already know that the Reverie arc, according to One Piece's editor, is not going to be a very long arc. But but the way that the structure of the pacing of this arc has been going, it's going in such a way where it's fast, but at the same time, even even if the pacing is fast, it still feels natural. Like this is the natural course that, that the Reverie arc is supposed to be going, and yeah, just we keep learning so much shit in this arc that it's like okay can we please take a breather because this shit is just off the chain insane from what we've learned from what we're all learning in this arc like holy crap um but yeah um so to start off we see what's been happening to Bartholomew Kuma of all people since his reprogramming and it really is a fucking sad state of a state of affairs to see him being used and abused by the celestial dragons which it's like yo if if kuma wanted if he wasn't a if he wasn't even a fucking hell just taking the, fa the fact that he's a, he was he's a warlord and whatnot like Kuma would basically destroy the destroy the celestial dragons for, for basically abusing him the the, the 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 way they've been doing. If 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 you for definitely warlord or not, he would basically fuck them up, like no doubt. Kuma is one with his pride for sure. So, but I, I don't know. It's Kuma's always kind of an enigma. Who he wants to he he only wants to, he wants to obey the government but but only to protect the the, pe the people he cares about so yeah it's like uh, so yeah it's it's weird to say but even after the reprogramming it, kuma basically letting the celestial dragon step on him is kind of in in its own twisted way it's it's in his character to to let him in its own which is the way it's it's in his character to, to, to pretty much let that happen to him but it's just it makes, but, and to see that they're rent, just to see they're renting him out. Ugh. The celestial dragons are fucked up. Now, one thing I will say, though, is that, one thing I will say is, is that Roswald, he mentions, he mentions, he mentions knowledge of the Don Quixote, which, which isn't, I guess, too surprising, because the, the Don Quixote, which isn't too surprising because the, the, all the celestial dragons, from what I hear, still kind of, even though they just kind of did their own thing, from that they're still kind of a, a very tight knit kind of group, con considering that that they're all they're all kings who who, who basically joined the, the world the world government. So obviously, the Roswald he definitely he definitely knows more. He definitely he definitely knows a he definitely knows a lot about the he definitely, he definitely knows a lot about the Don Quixote family for sure. So. It really makes me wonder as to what kind of secrets and what kind of knowledge he particularly has about that family in particular, as, especially considering how much, especially considering how much Do Flamingo himself known. So it's like, yeah, R R R Roswald, he's. I'm not gonna lie, of all the celestial dragons, at least in this particular chapter, he's one I'm kind of here. He and and Miosgar for sure are ones. I'm really curious about for sure, like, especially with with the knowledge he has, and and in terms of yeah, just and yeah, but uh, 
And 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 back to Kuma though, like with, with the way Kuma, with the way he was being used and abused in this episode, there's very, and and with and with the particular panel shot we got of, of the of the of the revolutionary pretty much discussing ways in, in which they can, in which they can try and get Kuma back, like like get him back to his old self and and reverse the re reprogramming that was done to him. That in itself kind of makes me feel that we're in this. To me, there are very heavy hintings in, in this that this that in this chapter that there's going to be a point in the story that def definitely definitely not too far off in the future where the revolutionary army is going to almost discover a way to bring Kuma back, which. If all the dots connect in the way I hope they do in terms of this search, then we, in terms of this search that the revolutionaries are going to do for a way to bring him back, then we might be headed towards an official <clears throat> introduction to Vegapunk. At least, at, at, at least at last, because if you think about it, Vegapunk, both, both Kuma and Vegapunk are basically connected. Vegapunk was the one was the one who, who did the reprogramming of Kuma, and as such, from all we know so far, he's the only one with knowledge of how to of how to of how to reprogram him back in, into his in, into the person he was. So, in so in that sense, it kind of makes it would almost kind of make sense at this point. <clears throat> in order to finally introduce Vegapunk into the story, especially if the, if the revolutionaries are going to try and look for a way in, in order to get him back. So, yeah, Vega. So, yeah, I can honest to God see a, an official Vegapunk introduction on on the horizon with with this particular with on the horizon. Maybe not in this particular arc, but definitely in, definitely in the near future for sure. <clears throat> and and when he and when. <clears throat> but like and and the reason to <clears throat> and of course the reason why I can and the, of course the reason why I see like a Kuma returning to normal is such an important key thing right now is that like the whole thing with the with the celestial dragons it doesn't even scrape the surface of 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 why of why they would want Kuma back of why why the revolutionary army would want Kuma back because because. <sighs> Apparently, we learn that Kuma is apparently a former king, and when you consider what we learn about the Elder Stars in this chapter, about how they answer to someone named Eam, I think I, I think I pronounced his name right, Eam, I don't know, it's just, it was just said, it was just uh, spelled as I am, so I want to assume it's Eam, but yeah, considering the way that we learned that the Elder Stars answer to someone named Eam, who is like the shadow ruler of the Empty Throne, who's which is the highest seed in the world government, then this opens up a whole new realm of possibilities of what knowledge, of what knowledge is basically locked away in inside Kuma's mind. Like, locked inside, away inside Kuma's mind pretty much because of the reprogramming. Like, not, not only about the Void Century, but about the world in general, which, like, which would also give, which, if, if that is, if, if that is kind of partially the reason as to why Kuma locked away his mind to begin with in order to protect that information, then this gives oh, <clears throat> then this also gives a lot more clout as to how and why he ended up becoming a warlord to begin with. It wasn't just it wasn't just so he could try and protect the revolutionaries. It was also so he could protect whatever freaking knowledge he had as the king as king of the I think it was the Sorbet Kingdom. Or, or something or other, but yeah, it's the king of the Sorbet Kingdom, and but yeah, it's like <laughs> yeah, Kuma the, the the man has just so much. The, the man is a walking well of of information at this point with what with what he with what he knows, and if the if the revolutionaries can actually unlock that information, then. Oh boy, shit really is going to hit the fan. Now, the Elder Stars themselves have a pretty prominent role in this chapter as they talk about a great cleansing and... 
knowing that knowing that they're talking about that and considering what they were talking about with Eamon at the end of the chapter, then I think this is where shit is going to start hitting the fan because right now there are two possibilities going forward I see for this. Either they're going to try and assassinate everyone associated or who has started asking questions about the Void Sentry, <clears throat> or just a select few people that Eam commands them to kill. But <clears throat> in either case, I can definitely see Shirahoshi and Cobra as two people in major trouble or at least having severe death flag syndrome waving around them, especially when. You, especially when you see that panel of the sword piercing Shidoshi's picture, like that—that that pretty much alone guarantees that 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 that, 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 that is definitely a target. And uh, actually, when what actually when, when you pretty much look at that panel too, you, you definitely see Luffy's. You see, definitely see Luffy's more poster, or definitely just his picture there as well. So. I think the main targets in this whole assassination right now are going to be whoever is asking questions about the Void Sentry and whoever uh, and whoever has that association with Luffy. Because Luffy is <clears throat> whoever has had previous association encounters with Luffy, and <clears throat> and yeah, like it's just. This is what I'm talking. This is what I was talking about with the. And honestly, this is just what I was talking about alone with the pacing. Is that it kept like the pacing was so fast, like shit was constantly hitting us in this chapter. But it happened in such a way where we basically everything was happening to a degree in which we still understood it. Like wow. Um, and okay, I've been dancing around it, but let's talk about Eam because the way I see it, this guy has some very either frightening influence or frightening power in order to command all the governing bodies of the world government, including the Elder Stars, and being able to keep tabs on everyone around the world. I mean, the way Oda is building this guy up so far, he is real. He really is an all-knowing god. So, right now... It's one of the things where, while I am interested in how the reverie is going to go, I also want to learn everything I can about about who this Eam is. Like, he's definitely, like, all, and I, and I wonder if Oda, and I wonder if Oda may have given us a bit of a hint to his, to Eam's power with the way the last panel focused on his eye, or if that was just a build up for drama, but yeah, it, it was, it, was a, it was an interesting choice for Frodo to focus on his eye for sure, because it definitely looks like a, a, Renegade, a Renegade eye or something like that, but yeah, and yeah, just Eam, like, I, again, this, I almost, again, it, it is, it is looking to almost be a little plausible that Eam might be Joy Boy, I guess, but huh, it's just, I, Eam, Eam right now is basically a god, so we're gonna, he's basically a god if he can command all these powers, so yeah, Eam, I definitely want to know more about you, man. And so, one curious thing we learn is that Wano is basically not an allied country, which, fair enough, considering that right now their shogun is allied with Kaido, and... Considering they're basically in the middle of a civil war, this this does also set up for Luffy's conflict with Kaido having more than more on the line for the country and and I it's a and the whole Wano and I can see Luffy's actions being a big topic of discussion right alongside the Void Century during this during this meeting and Wapple shitty and grin to Dalton when. When 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 all when those two kings mentioned Wano's I think financial situation, you you know, you know he's gonna you know Wapple's gonna pull is gonna start some shit now like you know Wapple is going to bring up just he's going to bring up the soccer kingdom's credibility for sure especially 
like it's bad enough that they're using a pirate flag, so to speak, as their as their a jolly a jolly Roger as their as their main flag, but. Now he's going to probably bring up their financial situation as well. So it's, yeah, the soccer, all, all these little intricate, <clears throat> intricate plots are starting to come together. And yeah, it's, it's, it's growing insane. Like it's, it's, it's already growing insane. <clears throat> and the soccer kingdom's credibility is definitely going to come into question for sure. <clears throat> and, uh, so, and one thing about Wano for sure is that, is that I'm not sure, and the thing, and, and the whole thing about financial credibility too, with Wano specifically, is that Luffy's actions at the end of the day, okay, he defeats Kaido, but what happens to the country after? This, this whole civil war that there, that's going on... <clears throat> is probably going to end up causing them some real financial issues and I I can see I can see Wano becoming a bit of even after the whole conflict with with Kaido is said and done I can see Wano not being in a real financial crisis almost like the country is gonna have to is gonna have to like he's gonna have to almost completely shut down or be destroyed or I I don't know like that definitely the government. Af I can definitely see the government. I can definitely see that after Luffy defeats Kaido, that the government is going to play a heavy part in whatever the fuck happens to Wano afterwards. So, yeah. <clears throat> and we get introduced, reintroduced to Jewelry Bonnie, but the question is, what the hell is she doing at Marie Joie? Because Considering, considering how she acted when seeing Kuma get abused, seems that we're seems we're point being pointed in the direction of her settling some kind of personal grudge with the Celestial Dragons or just the government in general. Because she really only seems to get emotional every time she sees abuses of power, and I I don't know if this was just a th throwaway line or whatnot, but it's, and okay, sh she pretty much transformed as, and okay, we, we basically see her transform as, as a queen, like, regent or something, so what kind, so that also means, is jewelry also, like, former royalty or something like that, that's, that's just a question unto itself, especially with the, especially considering that her old lady form is Jewelry's old lady form is someone that that is recognized by the government. So, yeah, what's just what's the deal here? Like, <laughs> yeah. Overall, guys, all I can say is this: this 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 was one of those chapters that just hit it with so much information, and yet at the same time, so many questions that that still need answers. So. Yeah, guys, that's my review. If you enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe, follow me on Twitter and Facebook. Death Night of Anime, signing off. Later.